Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where you join us at Adana, where a very interesting thing is happening, which is I've sent a very small force of just Prince Ulf, the current factioner, for now at least, together with some scouts as backup to go and take Adana. They're not actually going to be taking Adana, I'd just like them to basically hold it still for a bit, but unfortunately, the Adanans have decided to sally out and uh, they might well win that fight. I want to win this fight, but I want Prince Ulf to die at the end of it so that he's no longer the factionaire, because as a faction leader, he'd be kind of terrible, and there's a much better guy next in line if Ulf were to have a little accident while taking over Adana. So, that's where we're kicking off today. We need to basically win against this force, and then kind of lose against it at the last minute. So, uh, actually, in all fairness, we might not be able to win anyway. These guys are pretty damn solid. Uh, nice they've got, yeah, they've got two units of spear militia. The archers are okay enough, but the Armenian cavalry is pretty chunky. Screw it, let's give it a go and see what happens. Worst that can happen is he dies, and that's what I want to happen anyway. So, they're now coming out. I want to back off as far as possible, just to kind of basically give them a bit more space. This is, this is the crappy little hill fort we're having this battle over, by the way. It's very, very crappy indeed. Now, they're all basically piling out together with the Armenian rebels and whatever. So all I really need to do is, yeah, back off and then hit them with a couple of good, big chargers. Now, the scouts don't have a good, big charge on them. You guys just stop there. You guys are going forward. Yeah, there's some spear militia. One wants to be at the front. Screw it. Let's just go for a great big charge against you guys. Unless you guys want to be... Are you guys at the front? No, you know what? The Armenian cavalry wants to be at the front. Lancers down, lads. Lancers down. Straight in the front. Straight in the front. That'll do some good work now. I want this guy to back off immediately. Like, the nice thing is, if I don't want him to break. He can't break because I need him to basically be the guy who, like, you know, actually dies at the end. Because if he wanders off without dying, that's unfortunate. So, back off. Let's let this be between me and the cavalry. Because the Armenian cavalry is trying to blatantly hunt me down. And the infantry is not going to be able to keep up. We can basically just run away. So let's get the infantry left behind and instead just nail the Armenian cavalry a little bit. So just back off over here and keep the scouts moving in this direction too. So I can just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. The archers are well back. The spear militia is well back. But because it's heavy cavalry, it's not actually that much slower than just normal infantry. So now at this point, let's just get, yeah, you, get on them, you get on them. They're charging, supposedly. Let's get in there, and let's get my scouts round that. No, my scouts need to be round to the rear. Hopefully, we should be able to should be able to win this one. Scouts, like, your point is kind of to move fast. I need you to move faster than what you're moving right now. The Armenians are actually doing embarrassingly well. Get in the side of them, please. Our foolish general has thrown his life away. Nice! Good! That's what we need to happen. Okay, so... Okay, we've got two objectives here. Objective one was we actually wanted to, like, have this guy die. Objective two was we actually wanted to, like, actually, you know what? Let's just pull him back a little bit. Pull him back a little bit. Hopefully this bodyguard doesn't break. Yeah, it's still, it's shaking, but it's still fresh. You get out of there as well. That's absolutely fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically send my scouts to just go, oh, they've broken. That's annoying. Right. No, if you can. Oh, no, actually, you physically can't do the big horn anymore because he's technically dead. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Right, I'm now going to send these guys around the outside if they can just avoid breaking, which they should be able to because they're steady. So what I want to do now is basically have him slam into the archers because he can still do some good work against the archers. Just avoid these guys. Just run straight through them. Run straight through them. Now, archers. We may as well just get a good charge on the archers. And if you guys want to unbreak and get back involved, I'll send you against the archers too. These guys are now going to basically just get hopefully lances down. Hopefully these guys don't flee too much. This will do. That will be a nice, big, chunky bit of damage to the Armenians. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Now they've lost like 20 right there. So you guys are right there. Let's get him out of there for the time being. So he's going to get himself surrounded, which he won't like. So let's just pull him out of there. I probably need to like kill these guys. I think the other cavalry fell over there to deal with. Yes, good. These guys have recovered. Let's get them back in the fight, damn it. Right, so to get you out of here and you over to here. And ideally, what we need to do is we need to take out those Armenian cavalry. Or make them break to pass on the morale penalty to someone else. Because no one else is going to be able to keep up. And 26 versus these five. Yeah. Right, screw it. Finish these guys off. Just get them surrounded. And because they'll be surrounded, yeah, look at that. Two of them went down immediately. So those guys are down to two, one, nothing major. Back off, back off, back off, back off. The big lads are coming in. But that's fine because the scouts are now back. 
The scouts can now hit the archers in the rear again, focusing on the weak lot, if at all possible. That's Armenian archers. Yeah, fine. So now these guys need to basically get the hell out of there because the Armenian cavalry are doing a really good job chasing them off. Like, technically... I wanted to win this fight, and I don't think I can at this point because I've lost too much of this. Like, the Armenian cavalry, I I slightly underestimated, fair enough. Uh, right, Armenian archers, you guys just get over there and charge them down. Just get over there and hit them. You've managed to hit the weakened units. They're already wavering. That's good. So the scouts have managed to basically get into a good position over here. These guys are 23, 22, just chasing these down. They're warmed up. They're shaken, but now... Get into the side of the 92 archers. You go and back off. They're broken. Good. Now these guys are... We've just taken out the leader who was apparently in the Armenian archers with a big charge. They're broken. Now, everyone, back off, back off, back off, back off, back off, back off, back off. Scouts, go one way. Go one way. Leader, go the other way. At this point, the Armenian cavalry are shaken. Oh, hang on. Surely we can't win this. No, surely we can't. That would be impossible. That would just be stupid. The Armenian cavalry is now backing off. Spear militia is shaken at 72. These guys don't seem to want to get involved. Right, bring you over here. Cavalry can do the impossible in this game. Okay, this is this looks stupid, but you'd be surprised at what might still be possible. Especially when we can get the surround off. Right, let the scouts have a moment off here. We just need to pull the battle a little bit more in this direction. Right, this is getting this is getting interesting right now. This is getting really interesting. The Armenian is down to 42 cavalry. I've got 17 and 27, and they're both kind of inferior. But, screw it. Let's get this done. Right, you back over in this direction. Get on them. And we just need to... Go, 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 go. This is a little bit slow. I wanted the scouts to be there earlier. But if the scouts can now hit these guys in the side. Come on, scouts. Faster, faster. Shaken but not wavering. Shaken, not wavering. And they've just broken. Boom. They've just broken because they've lost their leader. Missy, we've lost our leader too, but screw it. Apparently, it's, it's good enough. Right, at this point, that's the cavalry ridden off the field. Down to 19. Down to 19. Round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Get around the spear militia. You, the other way. Lead them off because I'm pretty sure they're going for... No, they're going for the scouts. They know what's up, but that's fine because we can just outmaneuver them. And they're... They're firing at two targets at once, which feels like it's quite frankly cheating, but whatever. Right, you, get up here, and now slam into these guys. They're already wavering, and they're broken. Now we can basically just follow these guys back to the city. The There's now literally the nothing on the field, but flipping... Men. I know we've lost half our men, but quite frankly... No, they've lost half their men, sorry. We've lost 70% of us. This is... Spear Militia, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Follow these guys. Do not break again, all right? Seriously. Yeah, they're steady. They're steady, right. Get the Armenian archers off the field. I want them off the field. At this point, the Spear Militia is... Technically, they're shaken. A big judge of... Wait, what? That Spear Militia's broken. Go, go, finish them off. We might win this. That's stupid on toast, but we might. There's only one Armenian archer left. Right, okay. And I think he's just dead because the banner's not moving Only anymore. No, he's just standing still. Do you not want to stab that guy? Do you want to stab that guy, please? And now... No, get get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Do not let a spear militia actually get a charge in on you. They're charging, but they're shaken. Right. Get over there. The scouts let one Armenian archer go. And now you just make sure we run down this 38 before they actually regroup. What's actually, what's actually coming back at this point? Uh, the 16 Armenian archers over there. You're now getting on top of these guys and chopping them down. That's beautiful. These guys don't know where they want to go. These guys are falling very quickly indeed. They've turned their attention to the scouts because the scouts are actually like, you know, chopping down their friends and whatever. There's something over there. That, yeah, there's 16 Armenian archers over here. Just bring these guys through forward. Bring them in this direction. Bring them in this direction. And then once they're on top of them, then clip them because then they'll actually get the attacks. And yeah, look at that. You want to do that manually sometimes. Now go and take out these Armenian archers. These guys now have... Oh, hang on. Is that the... That's some of the horses back. There's 19 horses back. <laughs> right, let's get these guys back out there. Now I want to bring the fight over to here. Bring the fight over to here. We've beaten these guys once. We might be able to beat them again. If we can... They're already flipping wavering. Right, okay. You know what? Screw it. I think we can do this. Bring you guys over here. Bring you guys over here. Oh my goodness. We might actually be able to flipping do this. This is utterly stupid. We might be able to. That's probably far enough. I'd like it to be a bit further out just to make sure the spear militia are on top of us. These guys are annoying me at this point. Now, get on them. 
and get on you into the side, into the side, into the side. And 19. Come on, don't break, don't break, don't break. This wasn't that well timed and shaken. And they're going to be surrounded and broken. And the scouts are right there to whack them down. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a total annihilation. That's it. They're totally gone. Right. Um, down to last. Yeah, there's one there. But don't worry about the one. Okay. The odds are apparently very much in our favor at this point. <laughs> This is stupid. I thought this was a fight that could win. Then it began. Then I thought it wasn't a fight we could win anymore. All right. Now I think we can win it again. If we can just get a good solid charge against that spear militia. Because what the bloody hell is left? What is left? There's nothing left on the field. Oh, God. This is stupid on toast. Right. Go. And go. Just get your lances down if you can, lads. Get your lances down if you can. Lances down. Right into the spears. They've broken. <laughs> Okay, right, um, now the question is, can we win this? Because if they decide not to come back outside, we technically can't really win anymore. Right, you guys. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. We will smash the enemy, marvellous. Oh, bloody hell, we've actually done it. We're going to have both objectives completed. The city's going to be ours, and we're going to have killed the leader, which is going to leave technically 24 scouts to manage the city because the bodyguard's going to cease to exist. <laughs> oh, this is the best. This is the best thing. Right, I need these guys to go down because I don't have to fight them again because there's a chance these guys want to fight on the plaza. If they insist on fighting on the plaza, we might still be able to technically lose this. It would be tough, but it's possible. Right, scouts... Go and take out those Armenian archers, please. It's up to 93% of the enemy killed at this point. They've got very, very little left. They've got so little left. And they can't take out our flipping leader because the leader's already flipping dead. Right, you go and take him out. And then, actually... Okay, he's breaking. That might let us into the city. What's flipping left? There's... Actually, that's it. There's, there's one guy. There's one spear militia right there. Okay, those guys have already broken. These guys have already broken. No, follow them. Follow them. Get inside the city. Get inside the city. While the gates open, get inside the city. Oh, don't let them in. Oh, gosh darn it. Actually, you know what? No. No, 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 no. Let them come to me. Let them come to me. Oh, but hang on. The towers are about to activate. Oh, the flipping towers. Open the gate. Open the gate. Open the gate. Come and fight me, you stupid bastards. Go, go, go. Everyone dogpile that one guy. Everyone dogpile that. We've won. <laughs> Yes! This is a clear victory. No, it wasn't. It was not a clear victory, narrator man. You lie. You lie, but I've done it. Oh, that's so stupid. That's so stupid. But it bears out what I just said. Cavalry in this game can do the stupidly impossible. Oh, that's... Oh, God, that was stupid. Oh, yes. We've got it, Dana. We've got it. I'm not sure we even actually want it, but we've got it, damn it. Okay, how much was here? How much was actually here? So there's about 2,000 odd people there. So we definitely can't make it a fortress anyway. So I may as well exterminate it just to get the population out of the way. Ah, but just sack it for the money. Screw it, I'll sack it and we'll hope. Okay, good, that's blue. Blue means blue's fine. We've got the most money and it's not about to go wrong. The rebels just managed to chase off everyone. More rebels, pirates just wandering off. Oh, that's just so perfect. Ooh, Nottingham Master Swordsmith's Guild. Every flipping time. And <gasps> the Pope is dead. Well, this turn just gets more and more flipping interesting. All of a sudden, everything in the world is going on here. Right, His Holiness the Pope, Pope Yacubus the Malevolent, has passed on. Now, the question is, do we own the majority of the Cardinal's College right now? Right. Papal election. We've got ourselves... Okay. So... Obviously, assuming everyone's going to vote for themselves, I've already got... Uh, hang on, we've got undecided votes. Right. So, there's only one undecided vote on the table, and it's Poland. Now, Poland, it doesn't matter who they vote for, because we're about to get ourselves a flipping, very untrustworthy Pope. <laughs> All right, lovely. I mean, I could, I could back the Venetian guy, but if I can have my own guy, there's no point. There's literally no point because it doesn't matter who Poland votes for, we own the balance of power because there's literally no one else other than the Poles. So screw it, vote for myself and we've got a new Pope and he's going to absolutely flipping lovers, lovers. Vote for us, 
And we have got ourselves, in his holiness's eyes, your faith is an inspiration to all of Christendom. Pope Barone, or Barone, or... How do you pronounce that? Wait, are we using Italian, Latin, or, like, Danish pronunciation rules right now? I don't know. Anyway, we've got ourselves a new Pope, and he bloody loves us. Because we have now managed to get ourselves a second Danish Pope in a row. Lovely. So yes, indeed, everyone voted for themselves, with the exception of the one Polish cardinal who voted for the French. So that's very, very good indeed. And now, let's have a look-see what that's done to the balance of... Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now! Now this is all... Okay. Right. One at a time here. One at a time. A lot of really interesting stuff just started happening. Right, we've kicked out a French agent. Cardinal reports... Oh, literally. Oh, that's interesting. Literally that day, uh, yeah, actually, one of the Venetian cardinals died and was replaced by the Polish guy. It wouldn't have made a difference, because I had two cardinals ahead, so I still would have got the majority. But yeah, if that had happened a turn later, then I might have been a bit more nervous. So, okay. Cardinal report, lovely. War declared. Papal states have attacked the Moors. Bloody finally, guys. Uh, and yes, my relation with the Papal states is now perfect, so that was a bit of a wasted bit of money. Speaking of the Moors, the Moors are over here. Fine. Probably should build some new troops over there. Faction announcements, and indeed, died a noble death in battle. Prince Ulf, and that means new faction heir, Prince Gustav! Marvellous. So, he's good. He's really, really, really good. But, we probably want to get him on a nice little crusade as soon as possible. Because if we get him on a nice crusade as soon as possible, he'll get even flipping better. Because those are good, good traits to have. I mean, this guy... This guy can handle the war in France, no problem. Though, yeah, we're definitely not going in there just yet. I'd say instead, this guy probably wants to head up here in preparation for an assault on the fortress. Yeah, that's where you're going. So you just go up there, just hang out in this sort of a territory. And the forces over in Iron Einstein can actually just about, yeah, you can just get over to... Him. Yeah, lovely. They can just about get over there. Very nice. If you just go one step further north. Lovely. Now, everyone else can now join up with you. You three. Over to there. Now, do I need anything else here? One more, perhaps. Yeah, let's just send them. What are you lacking? You've got those lovely mercenary bowmen. So, hang on. Let's just send you. Yeah, one more. You need to smash our scars. Nice, solid, chunky army. And that's a fortress, not a citadel. Fine. And so we're ready to go in because, yes, indeed, the Pope, of course, hates the English. And technically, they're no longer excommunicated, but they are straight to zero out of ten. So the Pope's not going to stand in our way at this point. Not going to stand in our way. And, yeah, the Poles aren't going to be reconciled for a while because they've been excommunicated and the Pope now still hates them. Luckily, yes, indeed, Hungary, happy with Hungary, hates France. Happy enough with Spain for some reason and really likes Venice. Good, good. And apparently the Pope likes Scotland. Possibly because Scotland just doesn't cause trouble. So this guy is Chosen One, Orthodox Instruction, Shining Faith, Persia of Heresy. Now, because we're like 10 out of 10 with the Pope, basically, he will give us whatever it is we want. No matter what we want, he'll grant it. So I'd say this is an excellent opportunity for us to basically pick a target and just say, I'm having that, please. Thank you very much indeed. And the question is, where do I want to hit? I mean, I'd say there's an argument for saying Krakow. We could say Krakow and then basically let other people join in as well. Because quite frankly, I'd be happy for everyone else to just be at war with Poland and a few armies to go and deal with Krakow for me. Because if someone else smashes this out of the way, screw it. They can have it. I don't care. Someone else can have that. If, say, Hungary ends up with it, better and better. If they want to throw away a crusading army, lovely. This is just going to shatter Poland's relationship with everyone in Europe. That works for me, quite frankly. That's good or flipping enough. Still... Other priorities, which is, yeah, we've suddenly got ourselves a Dana here. <laughs> we've got a Dana, which is beautiful, which is just currently being held by flipping 45 scouts. Probably, Captain Jasper, get yourself in there. Let's turn that into, like, you know, a castle. Let's just get that turned into a wooden castle. And I believe, actually, I think I'm allowed to then immediately after turn it into a stone castle. Yeah, the population's 1,500. I can't remember what the actual population threshold for our... Uh, for a stone castle. Actually, I can check that over at Dongola. Uh, and it is... Doesn't say. So I think I can just do it as much as I want. So basically, as long as I can hold out another few turns, I can get a stone castle going. Sire. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, you guys need to get a... Ooh. 
does not matter. Ah! Who is right? I don't think they're going for Adana at all. Because they're not going this way. I think potentially they're looping round here to cross this bridge to get down towards Aleppo. Which is weird, but I guess they're welcome to do it if that's what they want to do. Right, just in case, I'm going to move this guy in front of this area just to keep an eye on things. Ah! And would you believe, actually, yes, the Turks have basically decided... Oh, no. The Turks decided, I think, to try and retake some of their lost territory. Um, You've picked a really, really bad time to go and have a little Luxi at Odessa. FYI, not a good idea. Terrible, terrible timing. Right, Antioch, what can we do with you, my good friends? Uh, screw it, you know what? You guys can have a brothel just so you can train spies if need be. But yeah, everything else, Jerusalem has... Does Jerusalem have the... Yes, Jerusalem does have ballista towers. Good, it's large cities that are allowed ballista towers. Whereas, I think for a fortress, you need to wait for Citadel. I think fortresses aren't allowed, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so that's fine. Jerusalem can put up a better fight than you're probably expecting. But they're coming. They're coming to Aleppo. The fortress, however, is almost done. So just keep training those Norse archers. A whole bunch of Norse archers. This is then, apparently, could be, where the first actual flare-up's going to be. Over here in Aleppo. Which is very soon going to be a proper big fortress. Not great, but fight Aleppo. We basically sacrifice Antioch. Adana, don't care about whatever. Then hopefully they swing by, deal with Damascus for me, and take some knocks while they're doing it. And then the real fight happens at Acre. That's where the real flipping fight happens, okay? Right, also just keep an eye on things to make sure that, like, you know, we don't want King Steve actually fighting in Aleppo. Sorry, when King Steve fights, it's going to be at Acre. So that's all fine. Now, we've got plenty of money. Acre, what do you need, if anything, of interest? Honestly, at this point, I think you're all right. So I may as well just give you need anything here to be honest and like there's no point wasting money may as well give, just give you a blacksmith get some good armory facilities going in that way as for gaza ah yes indeed gaza's halfway to an armory already so we will have an armory down there so that's fine now i'm pretty sure i saw on this bit of road for just a second just for a second i saw so i'm just gonna move you to here no, I don't see anything. Right, I need a... Are there any agents floating around here, bunny chance? I think there's a... Ah, yes, there's a new priest. God's right, um, I need you to kind of act as a flipping spy for the time being. Would you like to be a spy? Also, I could just train us. I could just train a spy. Screw it. Let's just get a spy over here. I want to see what the bloody hell's going on. Or I could just take out this guy, but there's been rebels in Cairo for bloody ages. I can't be bothered to deal with them. It's fine. Uh, right, Jerusalem doesn't need anything right now. Jerusalem's under control. I'm going to give them a council chamber just to make sure everything's fine. Uh, yeah. I feel like we're moderately well prepared down here in terms of infrastructure. We need more troops, but don't worry about that just for this second. Instead, actually, what I'm concerned about is there's an inquisitor around here. In fact, actually, there's multiple inquisitors. Okay, we've got a good pope in. I was vaguely sending my assassin down south with the thought of, like, you know, maybe assassinating the pope if he needed it, but... Don't feel like he needs it right now. Instead, let's just get you over there. You, meanwhile, get up here. Yeah, now you're in a good position to speak to the French king or the Imperials if we need to speak to them in a hurry. Don't need to bribe the Pope anymore. There's my nice little production things there. Very, very good indeed. Right, let's get you down towards Rome. Tomorrow's you just go towards Rome, where indeed the Pope is hanging out. Lovely. With his, would you believe, piety 10 out of 10. <laughs> but not so much on, like, you know, the command or chivalry or authority. Also, command 1 out of 10 is funny. Young peasant girls laugh when this man tries to tell them what to do. It's the flipping Pope. You'd think they'd show him a little bit of respect. And let's just get a city hall over him. Peasant twerks. We can slightly increase the tax rate. And it's a bit of a risk. It's a bit of a risk there. Fine. Let's just look, put that back down to low. Might put it up once that's done. Iron Einstein, meanwhile, looking good, looking good. Don't need an archer range, let's just get garrison quarters in there. We'll be good to be able to produce some more stuff. Ah, yes, indeed. And this guy is going on an epic journey to Hamburg and possibly to our house beyond it. Beautiful. This place definitely needs a city hall, by the way. This place is getting hard to manage. Let's just also give them, yeah, just another unit of town militia. It's completely useless, but I just want a tiny bit more garrison there because I'm concerned. I'm also concerned that this large imperial force that I was just saying, oh, that's a defensive force around Nuremberg. In theory, we could get over to Prague very quickly. But I could get reinforcements from Breslau very quickly. So maybe I don't need to be that worried. I think we're okay for the time being. But let's definitely get just a handful of extra troops going on over here in uh, Corsica, just in case we need that. 
Just a few more. Two scouts is fine. Let's just get just a handful more Viking Raiders just to make sure. Actually, you know what? No, screw it. Dismounted Huskars. Just to be absolutely sure we're safe. Now, the real question. Who do I hate most in the world? Because I could turn the entire world at this point. Like, pretty much. 10 out of 10. Brand new Pope. My nationality. The Pope will sign on to whatever I ask him to do. And I want, ideally, this guy right here to go on a crusade. Now, what crusade do I want him to go on? Obviously, there's the flipping Moorish territories, but honestly, a random territory down here doesn't really help as much, to be perfectly honest. Sadly, I can't request, like, a campaign against, say, York or whatever, though I don't really want him going in that direction anyway. We would almost certainly be better off actually saying, yeah... I'd say the Polish capital. I can't think of a better option than the Polish capital. I mean, I don't really want him going all the way down to Iconium because there's a very real chance by the time he gets there, the Moors will have destroyed it. And I'm not actually sure what happens to a campaign if a... Sorry, a crusade. If the target of a crusade is sacked by a horde. I'm guessing the crusade just gets called off. I think that's what normally happens, if I recall correctly, under different circumstances. I think the Horde's rules will be exactly the same as anything else does. So yeah, if a uh, city changes hands and it wasn't anything to do with the Crusade, then as a result, the Crusade's just cooled off. So I don't want that. That doesn't help me very much. Pope, 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 Pope. I mean, I could go further afield. I mean, Vilnius isn't worthy of a campaign. But their capital, that kind of is. That kind of is. I mean, the alternative is the Sicilians. The Sicilians, where I could basically just have summing off them and we could actually have yeah we could have sicily itself which might be fun might be fun to give the sicilians a bit of a boot in all fairness i haven't really had too much trouble from them recently though damascus is not worth it damascus quite frankly leave it be because it will just slow down the mongols yeah you know what we're gonna go for it we're going to say it's going to be the bastards over here in Krakow. And I'm going to join up, but I'm going to hope some other people join up too. Because I'd like to say the Hungarians join up and then immediately take a bunch of damage, clearing out a whole bunch of armies, and that would be beautiful. Now, come on, Pope. Me and you, we like each other. Oh, yes. That sounds like a good noise to me. The Pope has called the Crusade. The Holy Bible may preach peace. But when it is Christendom itself that is threatened, then it is every Christian's duty to defend all that is holy. Indeed it is. Marvellous. I think we've seen that before, so we don't see that again. Now. Now, 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 now. This is where things start getting very, very interesting indeed. Let's just make sure we draw up this new crusading army, like, you know, nice and far away from anyone that might, you know, immediately assassinate it. Like this bastard, for example, or this bastard over here. So, yes. I think we know what we want to do in the fact, actually... These Crusader Sirens, we can actually send them on a second flipping crusade. This is going to be your second crusade, lads. Well done. Well flipping done. Marvellous. Right, Paris, we also just need to get some new troops in production here because we're about to take a whole bunch of troops away. Now, how many troops do I need to get a crusade going? I can't remember. I don't think it's a huge number. Right. Let's just get you heading north to join up with these forces up here. And yeah, if I'm just kind of standing about here-ish... No inquisitors get to you. That's fine. So, you, my good man, let's kick this the flip off. Including, yes, let's send some Crusader Sergeants on the Second Crusade. Scouts, mercenary Frankish Knights, they're solid enough. Right, you go up here. And obviously, this here factioner cannot join just yet. But, all I need is enough troops to come and join him now. Yep, yeah, you, 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 and you. I think eight is the number you need. And yes, indeed, I could join the Crusade immediately. If I do, however, then I'll need to basically start marching immediately. But if I'm heading by land, if I'm heading by land, I'm hoping, because I'm quite far away, I'm all the way over here, then as a result, that'll give the other territories who are actually closer time to get involved first. So I'd like to think maybe the Imperials will decide to get involved, which would be nice. And the Hungarians, if they decide to get involved, that'd be nice. The Venetians could definitely get there before me. But sometimes the AI factions are a bit slow to join up, so... This might not necessarily work out so well. Maybe I'll give it one turn. Give it one turn. Just make sure you're not going to... Okay, they theoretically could decide to actually attack me, which will be very annoying. So let's just send over a little bit of reinforcing strength just to make sure they decide they don't want to do that. Yeah, a few more bits and pieces there. Lovely. This looks damaged, actually, from the strength of the banner, so surely they wouldn't be stupid enough to attack. 
this I'm force right sir. here. And go on then, while I'm literally just standing I'm right honor. here, let's just slap down a watchtower. Can't hurt to have one of them. I'm just going to see if anyone else jumps to this crusade, because I don't want to jump into it too early, otherwise I'll end up having to do all the work by myself, which would actually be rather annoying. Because I'd rather someone else came in and took out some of these armies first. But at this point, Poland are very formally the enemies of Christendom. And while the Crusades happening, they can't possibly be reconciled. So, uh, this all works for me as far as I'm concerned. Actually, I could just send a second Crusading army. Like, in Thorn, we could just have the new kid here just basically jump in. Even if my first army fails, though, actually, I need it to succeed. Because that is my faction there. If I'm concerned that no one else joins it, maybe I'll have a second Crusading force over here in Thorn, just basically come down and smash these guys to get them out of the way, and then all he'll need to deal with are the troops in the city, which should be quite manageable. Yeah, that should be fine. Not least actually, we'll take out their king, which is cool. Actually take out their king and get, for our trouble, a flipping siege works. Very, very cool indeed. Then again, it might go the other way. Potentially, if the Venetians and the Hungarians and the Imperials jump to it, they could get to Krakow before I can, and as a result, they'll actually get the city, but... You know what? That's fine. I've got enough big cities with advanced infrastructure. Losing one would not be the worst thing in the world if it would hurt Poland and would mean I wouldn't need to have bothered weakening into my own forces. Now, other things to do. You, over here, get back into Lasagna the second because we've got a whole bloody large number of troops to repair here. Blimey. And the forces of Sarkal are almost ready to actually come up. Actually, I can't remember. When it says a uh, one-turn surrender, does that mean next time I end a turn it will actually happen? Or is it one more turn after that? I, when it says zero, it means then it's that turn. Genuinely can't remember. But honestly, this force here doesn't feel that good. There's a lot of flipping peasants and woodsmen at half strength at this point. Just looking at the banners. Yeah, I think we've definitely got this. What did you force that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got actual proper units here. We'll be absolutely fine there, including the peasants. Those are the peasants of Pezantwerp, by the way. There they are, still fighting, damn it. So at this point, it feels like, yes, indeed, the Mongols are getting closer. And if they're coming this way, they're coming to Aleppo. It's time to start sending some forces north from Gaza here. You, my good man, Godfred the Handsome, you just oversee the training. It's time for a first big army to begin migrating north. It's going to do more good up there than it's going to do down here. So these guys can just basically be heading in this direction. I um, don't know where we're going to commit all these guys yet. We will have a full stack army in Leppo. It will not necessarily be the best full stack army, but it'll be there, damn it. It will be there. Just because I would like to hold out against these guys at least a little bit. Let's just get an extra just amount of Tusk Island there as well. Lovely. Antioch, poor Antioch. Poor Antioch's just going to be abandoned, but screw it, why not? We'll have some extra spear militia there just to, you know, do a little bit of damage with the wall defences, I guess. Now, over at Cairo, I should actually also just start pumping out some priests. Now, the reason I want to do that is because Cairo has the Master Theologians Guild, so oh, priests yes. trained here are fundamentally pretty good already. And as sooner or later, my cardinal's going to start dying of old age. And the game doesn't always replace cardinals. This actually becomes a big deal in the late game, where when the factions become a little bit kind of uh, lesser, when you've eliminated a few, actually often the cardinals' college is very empty. Like, sometimes there's only a few cardinals in it, and they're all yours. Uh, so as a result, we just need to make sure we've got enough priests to fill any vacancies to make sure I retain control of the college. Because at this point, hopefully, there won't be too many more floating around. And those that are floating around, like, say, this priest here, this guy's going to struggle to level up because there's no heretics to kill. And, like, you know, the land he's standing in is already 100% Catholic, so he's not getting any benefits for converting people. So he's just kind of stuck at, like... 2 or 3 out of 10, depending on what he happened to draw. What are you, by the way? You're you're also 3 out of 10. So as a result of that, like, they're just kind of stuck. Because I think under a certain threshold, the game can't promote them. I think, like, just, like, if, for example, there was a spot in the Cardinal's College, and there was a priest, like, one priest who wasn't a Cardinal on the map, and he was 1 out of 10, he would not become a Cardinal. There needs to be a threshold. I don't know what it is. I think it might be, like, 5 or 6 or something. So, God's like, therefore, sick. just training priests from things like, uh, where you've got, like, the Master Theologians Guild is worth doing, just for the sake of keeping cardinals coming into the world. Now that spy, I'm actually going to bring back to... Spain is an odd one. It's kind of hard to find a good position. Like, that's a really bad position. For example, can I find a position where if I move, I can see... 
Okay, now I can see Zaragoza, but I can't see the other one. If I move one hex... Nope! That's literally the worst position possible. Now I can't see either of these bloody things. There's so many hills in this area, it's very hard to get your spies into a good position to see both of these settlements. I can't remember where it is. Like, it feels like there ought to be a position where you put him down. You could see the Portuguese capital over here of Pamploma together with these two cities, but it's kind of difficult to do. Maybe I'll just go and shove him down over here. Just keep an eye on the path into the Pyrenees together with these two cities. Spain doesn't need to be worried about, so we just need to keep an eye on these two. Anything that comes from Valencia at this point will have to come through that area regardless. Now, the English army over here. They've got a decent army and... Do I want to bother going to take it on? Honestly, I probably shouldn't. I should probably just head north to flipping York. Knock that out because that's only got three units defending it. I've got a ballista right flipping here. Yeah, I could just go and knock that out next turn. And then that's actually, at that point, England has two settlements left. Both castles. That's their economy in the toilet. And, by the way, that fortress is not going to be yours for too much longer. I'm coming for that. So basically, England wouldn't be England anymore. England would literally just be Wales. So we'd have to rename the faction Wales. Which would be dangerous because they might start eating leeks and becoming superhuman Superman. But it's worth the risk, I'd say. Let's just start getting a nice big force heading north here. Right, you go up there with most of the army. Take one more step forward if you can. Drop down a watchtower, just so I can see what's going on in the world. Perfect. And next turn, go and knock out York, please. Lovely. Nottingham, meanwhile, can just retrain a couple of guys. Okay, you know, you can retrain him. But other than that, we've got, we've got no money. Okay, fine, you can retrain the other guy too, screw it. The other nice thing, by the way, about not joining a crusade immediately is there's a very good chance next turn, if I don't join the crusade immediately, the Pope will issue a mission to join the crusade. So at that point, if I join the crusade, then he'll give me a little bit of money and stuff, which will just kind of sweeten the deal slightly. And also a bit of reputation with him. But as I'm already 10 to 10, that doesn't really matter on this occasion. I'm not sure if the Pope himself ever joins a crusade, by the way. I'm not sure if that's actually a thing, because he's certainly got a big old army here. So he could do if he wanted to. I'm just not sure if he actually ever does. Still, I think that's just about everything I can really do this turn broadly. Don't really need to do anything major at Paris. Paris is under control. Got some new troops coming in over there just to keep that place safe in case of a little kind of prod from the French. Rhymes is looking good as well. We can actually, you know what? Let's just send some extra archers from Rhymes over to Paris. Paris is much more likely to come under attack. Metz is okay for the time being, but wouldn't yeah. hurt just to actually send the scouts back here for retraining. In fact, can you afford to do that right now? Yes, you can. Spot on. We've only got four florins left. Marvellous. And then nothing major going on here. Yeah, I think everything's under control. Nothing much we can do here. Adana is also, yeah, we're retraining up Adana to get it into a defensible position as fast as possible. Army's moving north. Acre, looking good. Aleppo, Antioch, everything's under control. No one is going to sacrifice their lives here at Aleppo, by the way. I don't think we're going to commit any family member to that. In fact, actually, I swear we were swimming in family members down here. They've all kind of gone away. But any chance are any of you any good, like, worth bringing north for this? No, you're a drill master. You do more harm than flipping good. Yeah, these guys aren't great. They'll do the job if I have to, and I'm aware Dongola exists, by the way. I'm just completely ignoring it because it's not worth uh, actually developing because... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's got a port, but it's a port that can only really trade with... Well, it can't trade with Curra because it's a land border. Can't trade with Alexandria. Alexandria's port's over here. So literally can only trade with Jeddah. Jeddah doesn't belong to me. It's Rebel. I can't be bothered to go and get Jeddah because Jeddah's not much value for a hell of a lot of people that need to die when the Mongols coming. So, you know what? Dongola can just count towards my, uh, my count of cities, which is, by the way, currently 37. So we're actually doing pretty darn nicely right now, but I suspect that number's going to go down a little bit, potentially, before it goes up further, because the Mongols are almost flipping here. Right, I think that is indeed all I can do this turn. Let's see what happens next. In particular, whether anyone's got anything planned for joining the Crusade, because I'd love it if someone else jumped into that who wasn't me. Right, France. Probably just going to fall back and once again continue to try and deal with your own territories. All the diplomats in the world. You know what? Screw it. They cost 100 a turn to maintain, it's just France is spending a huge amount of money doing nothing of interest. I mean, for the amount of diplomats on the field, France could literally have like a half-stack army on the field, but they don't. They've got very little army at all, in fact. Over to the Imperials, would be nice to see them using, actually, be really nice to see them, all those forces sitting around Nuremberg, they could convert one of those into a crusading force. 
That'd be very, very nice indeed. And we'd also leave the door open to the Hungarians, potentially. Kind of a good secondary objective for this crusade, potentially. Yes, indeed. I thought I saw some Sicilians coming. Then I forgot about it and didn't prepare for it. Right. The Sicilians are indeed coming. It's not a big force, though. We just need to train some flipping little militia troops at Alexandria and Cairo. If they decide to besiege us, that's fine. The force together in the open field can take them out, or if they genuinely decide to come at me, I can deal with it just on the walls, because the walls are pretty darn tough. Russians just sending more troops out to the middle of nowhere. The Moorish navy backs off, and the Turks just merge together, but they surely won't be stupid enough to attempt to attack Adana at this point. No. They're backing off. Good, good, good. They just want to hold their capital. They're probably concerned about what might be coming in the distance. Now, the English. Any response to my potential attack on flipping York momentarily? A diplomat coming this way. Probably going to tell the army guys. <laughs> guys, you're going to be wanting to head north because the flipping Vikings aren't flipping done yet. And they've thrown... Ooh! Okay, so Team Portugal, living up to their reputation for madness, the Portuguese have decided to finally use that army for something productive. They've decided they're going to actually have a flipping crusade. Well done, Portugal. You know, oh, that'd be perfect. That'd be just perfect if after their wonderful, albeit brief, empire in Ireland, the next Polish acquisition... Literally, they've taken two settlements this entire game. One is Ireland, and the second might be the Polish capital. Portugal, this is, reminder, Portugal. <laughs> bloody Portugal, they're bloody mad. Right, as for Poland themselves, probably suddenly feeling a little bit on the nervous side, thanks to the fact that literally everyone in Europe now has a big incentive. Yeah, you know what? I'd fall back too. Oh no, in they come. Sorry, I didn't realise the Polish were actually going to be coming yet. Okay, fine, apparently it is uh, this turn right now. Let's just quickly finish off these guys. In all fairness, they've only got like, yeah, 500 men left and most of it's nothing. Right, let's just uh, kill these guys dead. So, what do we have here? You know what? You guys, fire at will, quite frankly. If they want to run at me, they are free to run at me. Everyone else can... You guys can probably draw together a little bit, like, you know, closer. We don't need to be, like, you know, quite this flipping spread out. It's fine. So, you guys all just round here. You guys just prepare to fire at will or whatever you flipping want. Let's keep these scouts at the rear. Make sure they don't get kind of too far ahead here. You guys more around this sort of a position, ready to loop in and flank. Lovely, mercenary spearmen. You guys get over here as well, just get back there. There we go. These guys are going to try and attack, but honestly, my archers will do an excellent job just taking them out. They've got missile cavalry there. You guys just get forward a little bit, just to make sure you've got a shot at them. They're going to fire at us, we're going to fire straight back. I probably should have actually moved these guys a bit forward a bit earlier, but it's okay. You guys, stop right there. You guys also stop right Actually, I think they're just charging him. I think they're just basically just going to charge in. That's fine if they decide they want to do that. Yep, they're just going to kind of get in. There's some Polish nobles. Ah, when it's missile cover, it's not actually um, proper bows or anything, is it? No, it's just kind of these guys. So we'll just basically take you guys out. Then we'll just take you guys out. We'll just take you guys out. Honestly, we can handle it. It's fine. And then you guys actually, you know what? Flaming shot. Flaming shot at point-blank range straight into these guys if you'd be so kind. If they want to do this, they're welcome to try this. Right, load. Load the shot. Load the shot. And prepare. 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 Pre continue preparing. Anytime you're ready. Ready to fire. 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 Fi There's the fuck You missed. You missed twice. You're all bloody useless. Right, okay. Let's get the... No, 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 no. You don't get to flipping get around the side of my lads, please. Thank you. These guys now... Now that they're... Oh, they're already flipping wavering. Yeah, they're not keen on being outnumbered and completely outflanked before the battle's even begun. Now we just slam into the side of them. They break immediately. You guys... Go over there. That's woodsmen. Woodsmen who are not going to be doing a good job. Scouts can basically just get on top of them. You guys, everyone on top of these guys. Now everyone get over here. Basically, now we just start wrapping up at this point. Quite frankly, if you can get on top of these guys, get on top of these guys. Then there's woodsmen who don't dare actually attack. Let's just get the scouts in there. Those guys, though they're heavy cavalry. Actually, you know what? I'll just use the scouts to pin them, quite frankly. Ooh, that looked like that was a better shot. Well done. Uh, well done indeed. Right, you guys, go and take care of these guys. You guys basically now just start wrapping up this number. Beautiful. It looks to me like it's already flipping collapsing. Nice and simple. Lovely. I think that did more damage. You just did way more damage to me than you did to them. 
Well bloody done. Stop it. Right. Everyone after these guys. These guys woodsman charging. Marvellous. Mighty Lord above. We have captured the enemy's general. That should be the end of it. That'll be the end of it. At this point, they'll all just start collapsing the moment the fight begins. We've just basically got to make sure they've all broken. And apparently, some Polish nobles are over there. Let's just make sure they go down. You. Let's just make sure everyone's actually breaking here. Job done. Nice and simple. End battle. Yeah. Fine. We'll just repair any damage there. But they were already incredibly badly weakened. So, that goes down. We take that place. I will just... How much is here? Barely anything's here. I'm just going to occupy it. Fine. We don't need to bother doing anything else. There's the one Polish cardinal. Heading over to Russia to convert them. Good job. Hungarians, hopefully also going to go to war against the Poles. Would be nice if they did. Nope, looks like the Hungarians do not care about this whole crusade thing. They just care about this whole Nuremberg thing, as it ever was. Ooh, and they've managed to get some new troops from somewhere. Excellent. Ooh, ooh, hang on. Hang the flip on here. That's a flipping Papal States crusade. They are getting involved. The Pope, I wonder if the Pope himself is going. He could be, you know. There's nothing to stop the Pope literally going on a crusade. Oh, that'd be lovely. Even more flipping territory for the Pope, because he's got three flipping territories this game, which is a little bit higher than usual. So that'd be really cool. Okay, everyone's getting really into this crusade. Like, after the last few crusades, everyone was really like, eh, can't be bothered with this crusade. But no, this has been a good crusade, damn it. Now they're going to... Ooh. Okay. Another flipping change direction from the Mongols here. Now they are heading west again. Heading over open ground towards, well, pretty much to Adana, to be perfectly honest. Oh dear. Adana will be an underwhelming first siege, but uh, you know what? It might do a bit. And convenient timing. Aleppo, St. John's Minor Chapter House, abso flipping lootly. The Pope has indeed asked me to uh, join the crusade. Very, very gladly indeed. And we've got Cardinal dies. Oh, one of the Danish ones is dead. And yes, indeed, this is why I need new priests. Because it means we can replace our own cardinals when they start dying of old age. Diplomatic information. Ah. Well, this is intriguing. This is... Wait, what? How have... How have Poland and Portugal just declared a truce? You're literally sending a massive army to attack the... Okay, that's fine. Also, the Polish and the Imperials have broken their alliance. And... Ah! Oh, the Venetians are getting involved too. Oh, everyone's dogpiling. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is really, really, really damn good right here. And speaking of which, uh, by the way, I've decided I'm involved in this campaign too. Just so you know. So I'm just going to join this crusade. There we are. And for doing that, I actually get myself straight away, I think, an extra point of chivalry from somewhere, which is lovely indeed. So we have now got ourselves our new little thing there. Ah, I've lost mean leader. That's what just happened. And I've also got 500 florins. And the Pope likes me more. He already liked me quite a lot, actually. Faction announcements, nothing major over there, to be honest. Priest and uh, diplomat dies. Nothing too dramatic. And the hordes... Ah! Technically, the hordes have actually arrived because the hordes are inside Adana. So the hordes are now here. So, uh, oops. They're not here just to wrest ownership of the lands. They're here to exterminate your people. Yes. Yes, indeed, they are. And that's not good at all. It's fine. Yes. It's under control. Ah, good. We can actually get around these guys now. Good. So we can now actually get you around here and then you uh, around the back here. Lovely. So, they're here. The horde is now literally inside a territory I own. We are upgrading. I can't believe the first area they're going to hit is going to be Adana. Literally the worst thing we've got. But we've got Aleppo. We've got fortress everywhere. Antioch. They're just going to swing through Adana and Antioch. That's going to be embarrassing for everyone involved. But never mind, eh? Never mind. And we've also got... That's a really crappy army you've just decided to send over there. I think I've just got... Yeah, I've got a spy here. Right, so... um. What exactly was your plan for peasant archers, peasants, and Muslim archers? I mean, Muslim archers are really good, by the way. They're um, they're long range, and they hit pretty bloody hard. And also, look at that. They're kind of like... They're similar-ish, actually, to the flipping Nordic archers, except they actually get flipping long range missiles. So Muslim archers are really, really damn good. Uh, but I'm not sure you're going to be taking Alexandria with this, to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure you're getting past the walls, but you're welcome to give it a go. Okay, I didn't really need to be that concerned by the Sicilian Expeditionary Force. 
it's not that good. Now, this is where things start getting interesting. Because next time, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a campaign underway. We have got ourselves a massive force attacking an English fortress that's got one hell of a defensive force too. So that's going to be one hell of a battle. And we've also got a one-two punch against England because York is going down too. And the Mongols are actually here. Possibly next time you'll see the first battle of the Mongols. And if we're very, very lucky indeed, we'll have a really, really awesome, massive multi-way battle. Potentially... We are indeed now in a race to get the Polish capital off them. Because ideally, someone arrives first, smashes this army for me, loses, and then I go in and mop up the survivors. But we are now actually in a race to take the Polish capital off them. So that's pretty bloody cool as well. All of that to come, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. I can also just take this person to make them female. Can I just... Perfect! I'm delighted we share the same level of ambition. <laughs> Complete mediocrity all of the way. And then, oh, oh, the people at the back just kind of popped into existence there for a second. Okay, let's try this again with something else. I'm going to see if we can get Mr. Potato Head into this game.